Golf Central on YouTube is brought to you by the Paradigm AI Smoke Woods and Irons from Callaway. We have a leaderboard traffic jam. It is thicker than rush hour on I-4 here in O-Town. Bay Hill with some bounce and tomorrow even more bite as the greens continue to firm up. Major champions sprinkled in with major threats. I mean, Wyndham Clark finished strong and here's Hideki Matsuyama. He is in that group. Hideki with a round of 70. This is live on the putting green right here at Bay Hill. Rich Lerner with uh, Brando Chambly and Mark Rolfing and a special guest will join us in just a moment. Um, Scotty Scheffler getting some work in. He played his last uh, seven holes in five under par. One here in 2022 at five under is quite a tournament. Yeah, he put on another display of ball striking, but he also made some nice putts coming down the stretch. Made uh, obviously two putt birdie at the 15th. No surprise there, but made about a 20 footer. Uh, for birdie at the 16th and about a 20 foot or just inside 20 feet for birdie at the 17th to uh, shoot 67. You always think when you watch Scotty Scheffler work his way around golf course what could have been and in spite of that he sits uh, tied at the top of the leaderboard with uh, five other players for the lead. I tell you what uh, we really appreciate uh, Brian Harmon jumping up here on the set with us because uh, it is dinner time. It's a little bit after six o'clock and we're a stone's throw just a little chip shot from the, the lodge behind us. And I can smell the steak uh, that, that's cooking. And we know Brian likes himself a, a, a good steak, uh, but kind enough to sit down with us uh, before heading to dinner. Brian, good playing, and thank you for being with us. So uh, how was golf course, and then wor what worked so well for you today? Yeah, I finally started hitting it a little bit better. I uh, haven't really been in form since Hawaii, so I've been working hard on my ball striking. Finally, you got to get the strike a little bit better. and. Uh, play the par fives a little bit better on the weekend and, and we'll have something cooking. Let's roll back just a little bit because obviously I've seen a lot of you but this is the first time I've seen you up on the set since you won the Open Championship. Uh, you were having a nice career. You'd won a couple times. You'd finished second but last year obviously you win going away at the Open Championship. Three second place finishes. Can you point to any particular spark for the wonderful year that you had in 2023? I think just sitting down and just just recognizing that when I put my head to something, I'm, I'm pretty good at it. And just rededicating myself and just having a little more belief. Was it technique or was it data that you dove into? A, a little bit of both. Uh, you know, I've always had the ability to play really well in spurts, but it was never maintained very well. And, and uh, I just wanted to prolong those periods and, and, and try to just put a little bit more pressure on the golf courses when I was playing well. And how has your life changed since you won the Open in terms of time demands and uh, commitments and expectations? Yeah, the time demands are, are, are a little higher, but I got three babies at home that, that don't know anything about that Open Championship, so <laughs> they, uh, they keep me grounded there at Disney all day today, so I'll get to go home with some tired kids. You're leading the field in greens and regulation, man. The first time in a while since you've done that. What has been the big change in your ball striking that's allowed you to do that? Just being able to hit kind of a, a straighter shot with my irons. I like to call it a, a fade, but I don't know if it actually fades. You watch a ball draw for 20 years, and a straight one looks like it's fading five yards. But just being able to, to hold that, you know, just a little bit of right to left spin on my irons with a full release has been kind of the key for me. You've always been a momentum kind of player, and you were sitting next to me as we watched Scotty Scheffler hit that putt at 15. It was going 100 miles an hour. It would have gone 10 feet by. How different was the rest of Scotty Scheffler's day, do you think, because that went in as opposed to having a 10-footer per par there? Uh, it, it, it makes a huge difference, and uh, Scotty Scheffler making putts is a scary, <laughs> scary guy. So I'll see him here in the therapy room here in just a minute. I'll have to ask him about that putt if he hit it like he wanted to. Uh, Brian, I watched you hit a shot. In fact, it was at 17 today, and I turned to Brandon, as I always do, inside our trailer, and I said, I like that swing because you can tell immediately who it is. It's that sort of early wrist set. How would, how would you characterize your move and, and how did you come to it uh, all those years ago? Yeah, we, we fought that early wrist set forever. Uh, I've always been kind of a handsy, a little more timing than I would like, but you know, I'm 37 now. It ain't, ain't going to change a whole lot now. <laughs> Just try to, trying to get it as good as I can get it and see where it takes me. Yeah, let's take a look at your round today and uh, you'll walk us through. Uh, in the role of analyst, uh, you're ways off from that. You're winning golf tournaments still. Uh, so here we go. And yeah, it's a uh, five iron here. It's I know it's going to be hard to stop. Uh, flushed it, and I'm yelling for it to get down, and that's about the only way I can stop it right there. I, 
that's old country walking off that cement. We're gonna have to start stop hitting these flags. I got to figure out a better way to stop it than that. <laughs> there aren't many better caddy nicknames in country. That's right. Well, how about six, yeah. six iron here trying to hold it against that wind. That, this is the kind of one I'm talking about. That ball, look at that ball curving just a little to the yeah. left there. Yeah. Uh, you, you got to be able to hit it high and hold it against the wind to stop it around here. Mm -hmm. How about two twos on the front nine on those two par threes? They usually eat my lunch because they, they really call for a, you know a nice right to left shot, and that's something that I just haven't done much with my iron. Now with the eleven. Yeah, uh, aggressive line off the tee. Had a fifty degree wedge in. Um, that hole is kind of a have to take on those right bunkers in order to have a chance at birdie there. How the greens out here? They're great, man. They're always incredible, uh, but they are firming up. That back nine was, was uh, we like to call it, got, got a little haunted, haunted house out there uh, uh, back nine. Uh, we came on air with this shot here at 17. Uh, yeah, it's eight iron, just just full eight iron. Um, wind's almost straight down, trying to land on that front half, and just just nice executed golf shot. Haunted house, that's scary good right there. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> What do you think of this golf course? It's, it's a bear, man. It's only going to get harder. Uh, I don't know when it flipped. You know, it used to be kind of not like a birdie fest, but you felt like you could make a ton of birdies, and then all of a sudden we show up one year and it's U.S. Open conditions. And and uh, I've kind of had to change my mindset around here because um, it, it'll, it'll eat you up if you try to play it like a birdie fest. So you got to play patient golf, take it where you know, take it where you can, and. It's tough. It's really hard. Brian, it's been kind of a strange year, both on and off golf course and professional golf. I'm wondering if you're kind of feeling like this is what they had in mind with signature events. What's happening right here this week? You got six of the best players tied for the league, including world number one. And it kind of feels like maybe this is the first real time it's working. It's uh, the, the signature events for me have been incredible. I mean, we show up, they treat us like kings. The golf course is set up, you know, major championship hard. And had some really good players win, and I don't know what else you want. I mean, this as far as being a player and playing them, it's as good as it gets. You don't play many golf courses though with this kind of rough. Uh, and typically, when you do, we hear a lot of grumbling from tour players, et cetera, et cetera. Would you like to see? Because look, I'm thinking back at Kevin Kisner, uh, and I would say that you and Kevin Kisner have sort of similar games, right, where he yeah. famously said. And when asked if he can win any week, he goes, no, probably not. I can win on some golf courses. But on paper, this looks like a golf course you could win on. It seems like you'd like to see more of these. But in general, I'd say that these golf courses hold everybody accountable for every shot. So wouldn't you like to see more courses like this on the PGA Tour? I, I would. I think, um, as opposed to the last couple of years, the rough this week, um, you can at least make a, usually you can make a play towards the green. And that's kind of how I like golf to always go forward. I like there to be decision making out of the rough where it's, you know, you're not going to hit it close, but you can get it up there kind of close to the green and see if you can get it up and down. When we have pitch out rough, there's just no decision making. Okay. You hit it in the rough and you chip it out and then you keep going. So you're not calling this pitch out rough? Not, it's not quite pitch out rough. Okay. It can't, I mean, there's spots where you're pitching it out, but, you know, like on 18, I, I blew it way left and I could still hit it up there into the bunker and, and try to get up and down, but. I'm just as likely to make a six or seven trying to go at the green as opposed to just chipping it out and knocking it up there. Brian, we have six guys tied for the lead at seven under. You know when the last time we had six or more at the midway point of a tournament tied for the lead? It was 2011. There were seven guys at the Valero Texas Open. So, uh, you know, it feels like tomorrow 72-71 could be, could be a good score. So mindset when it's this stacked uh, and it's this tough. Yeah, the wind's going to come up tomorrow. Golf course is going to get really hard. So it's just a matter of um, managing your emotions, managing your expectations. It's going to be hard for everybody. You just got to try to make a long putt, have a little momentum swing when you can, and try and get the par fives. We thank you for stopping up. You going to go get a steak tonight? We're, we're, <laughs> are you going to chase down the kids yeah, at the gonna, theme park? We're, we're going to get a rub down and an ice bath and then, <laughs> then watch a movie with the kids probably.